Hello and welcome to Joliet, Illinois. Today we are going to be riding in business class back up to Chicago on Amtrak's Lincoln service. Joliet Transportation Center is the second major station to have served Joliet. The first was Joliet Union Station, which was built in 1912 and served the community until it was closed in 2014. Its replacement, the current Transit Center, began construction in 2016 and opened for service in 2018. The station serves Amtrak's Lincoln Service, Missouri River Runner, and Texas Eagle trains, plus Metro's Heritage Corridor and Rock Island lines. Heading through the front door, we're met with this spacious and modern transit center. Passengers can find plenty of seating downstairs, an information booth, and ticketing desks for both Amtrak and Metro. A glance at the Amtrak departure board shows that our train, Amtrak Train 302 to Chicago, was still relatively on time, having been delayed by a single minute from its original 11.04 a.m. departure time. Joliet Station also includes a second level, where passengers can find a bunch more seats. A piece of history also lies atop this new station, Union Depot Tower. Union Depot Tower was completed in 1914 and was built to control the crossing of the Rock Island and Santa Fe and Alton Railroads. The tower controlled the signaling and switches for the tracks into and out of the depot and was staffed by Metra up until its closure in 2015. Plans are underway to open the tower to the public, although the initial opening has been delayed until August of this year due to the pandemic. Although we can't go inside, we can go outside, where we can see the tower in all its glory, plus a bit of the interlocking and metro platforms over which it watched. Heading back inside, we can take the elevator back down to ground level, and while we wait for our train, we can take a look at our route back up to Chicago. Our return to Chicago begins by heading north out of Joliet, cruising along the banks of the Chicago Sanitarian Ship Canal. The canal turns east, and so do we, following along through Willow Springs and Summit. We finally break off through McKinley Park for a brief parallel run to Chicago's Orange Line subway. With one final turn north, our train runs through Amtrak and Metro's Chicago yards, arriving at the south concourse of Chicago's Union Station a few minutes later. We'll cover a total of 37 miles on today's ride, with a travel time of 50 minutes. From seemingly out of nowhere and well ahead of schedule, our train pulled into Joliet. I didn't even realize that it had arrived until I looked up and saw its reflection in the window. Not wanting to miss our ride to Chicago, I hurried up to the platform and climbed aboard. Now, I had initially thought that my ticket was for coach class, so we'll be seated in coach for the first part of this journey. Our time in coach does give us the opportunity to take a look at the seating on board Amtrak's Horizon coaches. The coach class seating is plenty comfortable, with each seat including around 8 inches between my knees and the seat in front, plus a bit of space beneath the next row to stretch out. The footrest which is seen in business class and Amtrak's long distance routes has been removed with a clear slot for where it should go when offered. The mesh seat back pocket is large enough for small personal belongings and holds the safety information card for our Amtrak Horizon coach. The tray table folds down from the seat back, translating back and forth to the user's liking, but as with most Amtrak tray tables, it lacks a cup holder. Above each row are two lights, controlled by the buttons in between. For whatever reason, Horizon coaches feature bright orange light housings. I have no idea why this is, and it makes them stand out from the rest of the interior like a sore thumb. Outlets for each row are located on the wall just below the windows, both of which were working well. Seat adjustments are made using the button on the armrest of each seat, reclining the seat back another 20 to 25 degrees. Despite their relatively recent refresh, these coaches are on their way out. Amtrak has begun the full implementation of their Siemens Venture fleet on Midwest trains, with the goal of phasing out all of their older rolling stock in the near future. 
We've actually had the opportunity to take a look at these new coaches, so if you've missed that review, click the link in the top right or in the description below to check it out. Of course, it wouldn't be an Amtrak trip if we didn't have to wait for freight, and it didn't take but five minutes before that box was ticked. Overtaking us on the mainline tracks was a BNSF Autorack train en route for Chicago. Or at least, I thought we were waiting for it, because as soon as the end of the train was in sight, our train began to roll out of Joliet, beginning our 50-minute ride to the Windy City. It turns out that the Autorack train was breaking off to cross the Des Plaines River, having begun its journey from BNSF's Joliet Logistics Park terminal not long ago. Now on the move, our conductor came through to check our ticket, and informed us that we actually had a business class ticket for this ride back to Chicago. Not wanting to miss out, I grabbed our belongings and headed towards the rear of the train to find the business class coach. Business class on Amtrak's Lincoln service, at least for the time being, is operated by a split cafe business coach. These coaches are actually great for business class, as they feature the big leather armchairs in a 2x1 arrangement. Each seat features around a foot of legroom between my knees and the next row, with plenty of space beneath the seat to stretch out. Business class includes footrests in the slot that we saw earlier, and fold down from the seat back using the pedal on the side. The seat back pockets are notably smaller than in coach, and includes the safety information card for entirely the wrong coach. For whatever reason, our seat had the card for a single level sleeper car, instead of the Amfleet 1 card, which was strange to say the least. Tray tables can be found in the backs of each seat, and include the cup holder that we were missing on the Horizon coach. The usual outlets can be found on the walls just below the window, with two lights above each row as usual. If the sunlight becomes too bothersome, passengers can close the blinds located along the windows. The seats themselves are fantastic. These big armchairs are much wider than the usual business class seats and include more cushioning along with finer upholstery. Because of the 2x1 arrangement, these seats can also be farther apart, and thus include a central armrest with two cup holders, providing some much needed separation from your seatmate. These seats are also the only dedicated business class ones in Amtrak's fleet that include a leg rest in addition to the usual seat back adjustment. Reaching beneath the seat, we can pull the leg rest up, which ratchets into place. It's a nice addition, but in my opinion, these seats are still a bit too cramped for the leg rest to really be useful. The seat back can also be reclined around 25 to 30 degrees using the upper lever. Because business class is a premium service with business travelers, it's usually much quieter than coach, which is certainly the case here. Business class also includes a few other perks, namely seat reservations, complimentary beverages, and a 25% reward bonus. Unfortunately though, seat reservations were unavailable for our ride, with business class being first come, first serve. I was incredibly fortunate to have found an available window seat, which was actually the last one in the entire coach. The free beverages were still up for grabs though, and I made my way over to the cafe car to grab some refreshments. Free beverages include anything from Amtrak's non-alcoholic selection, with alcohol remaining as a paid extra. Now, business class of course comes with a price premium. A standard ticket between Joliet and Chicago costs $7.50. The business class upgrade for our ride was an additional $14, which is high but not entirely unreasonable. I only say that because of the much nicer seats in business class. Had this been a regular Amfleet 1 business class coach, my opinion would have been very different. Would I recommend it? It really depends on how much you value the extra space and quieter environment. Without seat reservations, it's certainly a hard sell, but those armchairs are a huge step up from the standard Amtrak seats. Plus, if you're traveling solo, there's always the possibility of having a solo seat. I personally enjoy the upgrade, but ultimately, it's up to you. With some time still left in our ride back to Chicago, let's take a look at some stats about our train. 
Taking us back to Chicago this morning is Amtrak Lincoln Service number 302 and is powered by Siemens SC44 Charger Locomotive number 4601. Each SC44 Charger is powered by a Cummins 16-cylinder QSK95 engine producing 4,400 horsepower. SC44s are rated for a top speed of 125 miles an hour, but track speeds limit trains to an operational speed of 79 miles an hour. Our consist today includes three Horizon passenger coaches, one Amfleet 1 Cafe business coach, and although I didn't know it yet, one Amfleet 2 coach at the front of the train. Horizon coaches were built by Bombardier in the 1980s under the Comet family of coaches and feature a maximum capacity of between 76 and 82 passengers depending on the configuration. Our Amfleet 1 Business Cafe car, or Club Dinette as it's officially known, includes a total of 17 business class seats with 6 rows of 2 and 5 single seats. The dinette half of the coach includes 6 table seats plus the cafe bar. Our first signs of Chicago come as we cross over CSX's Blue Island subdivision, a four-track portion of CSX's Chicago mainline. The Chicago skyline began to peak up above the trees, eventually filling the window with its mass of skyscrapers. Crossing under the St. Charles Airline bridges, we enter Metro and Amtrak's Chicago yards. Metro stores and maintains most of their fleet here, with Amtrak's facilities on the opposite side of the main line. We pass by one last departing Metro train before dipping into the darkness below West Loop, arriving in Chicago right on time. Grabbing our belongings, we can step off the train and into Chicago. As I made my way towards the South Concourse, I spotted something odd on the front of our train, an Amfleet 2 coach. These coaches are normally reserved for Amtrak's single-level long-distance routes and feature more legroom than even our business class seats. Why it was on our inner-city train, I have no idea, but I'm sure whoever was riding in there was met with a welcome surprise. Heading over one platform, we can get a good look at the SC-44 and Consist that brought us here. SC-44s are great locomotives, although I wish their front ends looked more like their ALC-42 counterparts with a sleek nose instead of this broad, flat face. With our train appreciation complete, we can head back into Union Station where we'll bring today's video to a close. Next week, we'll be back in New Haven for a snowy ride on Amtrak's Hartford Line from New Haven Union Station to Hartford, Connecticut. If you're new around here, then why not hit that subscribe button? It's totally free, and it really helps support the channel. As always, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my patrons and channel members. If you too want your name in the video or just want to support the channel in more ways than one, then head on over to the links in the description below. But anyways, that's all I have for today. Thanks for riding with me, and I'll see you in the next one.